Hello everyone, welcome to our third lecture uh, on our course ST400. So this time we will discuss the strategic alliance in distribution. Okay, moving on. So when we speak of strategic alliance, we're talking about two or more organizations having connections that cause them to function according to a perception of a single interest shared by all parties okay by these two or more organizations so membership cause each party to alter its behavior to fit the objectives of the alliance and they exhibit genuine commitment so committed party works hard to maintain and to grow the relationship okay so what could be the implication of a commitment to the alliance so commitment is basically a long time horizon so it is an active desire to keep the relationship going so a willingness to make sacrifices to maintain and grow the relationship which may take in the form of giving up short-term profit or not pursuing opportunities preferring instead to devote the organization's resources to the alliance so for example if there are two um, companies or organization let's say for example there is a retailer okay who made an alliance with the wholesale distributor so the retailer may give up uh, profit okay short-term profit like for example there is another wholesaler distributor uh, who offers a cheaper price but because of the alliance that was made by the retailer to the other wholesaler they will of course um you know uh let go of the other wholesaler who offers okay cheaper price diba? so they have to uh, devote their resources of course to the alliance what else channel members tend to commit in a symmetric way wherein both parties upstream and downstream okay when we speak of your upstream we're talking about the the manufacturer okay and when we speak of your downstream it could be the wholesaler the retailer okay uh, are deeply committed to each other not having an asymmetric commitment so they work as one yeah so why do they need okay um strategic distribution alliance so for upstream motives these are your manufacturers okay strategic alliance with the downstream member would expect to gain advantages and profits from downstream channel members like okay produce to demand so they produce products based on the demand of the customers what else they also cut inventories why because uh, they would immediately sell their products to their retailers or maybe wholesalers what else they also avoid stockouts why because um whenever their uh, alliance would need products they would tell immediately okay and then they can produce the products that are needed what else uh, appreciate the ability to achieve better coverage at the lower cost motivate distributors to represent them better in current markets new markets and new products there okay in addition to that they also seek to coordinate its marketing effort with their alliance okay so like for example um the producers do not need to advertise their product because the retailers can just simply advertise their products by um perhaps sales talking to their uh, customers or um like for example in sm uh, SM is an example of a retail uh, store and at the same time wholesale store so they can just simply put billboards there okay to promote the product and yeah. rebalance the power 
um oh sorry what else uh seek greater cooperation in for and oh sorry uh seek greater cooperation in information exchange about sales inventory okay uh, promotional activities uh, rebalance the power arrangement from a wave of wholesaling consolidation and build good distribution or distribution network as barriers to entry by new competitors in the future All right how about the downstream uh, motifs so what could be the benefit or why do they have an alliance with the upstream member so downstream members are assured of stable product supplies and okay so the retailers are assured that they can have the product that they need okay which would be produced by the manufacturers they also make their own market effort uh, more successful they seek to cut uh, stock costs and suffer few out of stock situation why because whenever they um, do not have enough stocks the manufacturers can just simply produce the products that they need what else build uh, alliance to differentiate themselves from others because there are manufacturers who would distribute their products exclusively right? they offer value-added service such as training installation maintenance technical assistance and etc okay so let's take a look at the reasons why alliance outperform ordinary channels so committed parties would tr trust each other to do more for each other okay and help each other what else there would be an easier agreement okay they can work out their conflicts they help each other to cope with unfavorable outcomes and turn them around and evidence indicates that channel partnerships generate higher profits together okay all right so how does distributors judge a supplier's credible commitment so suppliers willingly dedicates personnel and facilities to distribute their products what else suppliers has eagerness to learn distributors organization and they use compatible reporting system geared specially to distributors system in addition to that investment um, designed to identify your business and their business in the minds of customers so they work together okay to make their product a priority of the customers what else investments such as training programs to help distributors run their uh, business better and then setting a location near the distributors okay what else um dedication also of people and facilities to suppliers line investment in upgrading and training the personnel serving suppliers line and there is effort or there are efforts to learn about supplier and build relationship with people okay uh training also to its customers on product information what else uh they would have effort to introduce the two parties name in customers eyes investment in reporting system particularly compatible with distributor system and they set up a location of a facility closer to distributor yeah so these are the actions that bind distributors to suppliers so distributor dedicates resources to suppliers what else they build commitment by opening a two-way communication so communication with each other they also exchange information freely information that are derived from um, their interaction for uh, the retailers either interaction with the customers 
ba? they can relay that information to the manufacturer so whatever feedback that they get from the customers such as uh, the products that they need they can feedback those comments okay to the manufacturers so the manufacturers can create or manufacture products based on the feedback of the customers or the final users uh, they give also advice to suppliers from time to time all right so um how to build a strong successful relationship so alliance is like a balance okay a scale it takes time risk resources and determination from both parties uh, in return for commitment on their part okay so if they say we are committed to you so we have to prove it something like that if we say or if we make investments uh, or if you make investments we make investments so both parties should make investments so if one party takes risk both of them should take risks so if one party such as the retailer performs okay by selling a lot of products then both the retailer and the supplier or the manufacturer should also perform wherein both of them would benefit from their profits so the two key ingredients to build successful alliance is of course mutual commitment and high level of trust okay so these are the five stages to uh, reach alliance okay status or status so number one is of course awareness exploration expansion commitment well if it's already done then decline and dissolution so first awareness so uh, one organization sees another as a feasible exchange partner so when they are aware of that then they explore so exploration so they test by probing probing sorry both sides investigate each other's natures and motives and then there is already interdependence so this stage is easily terminated by either side why because they are still trying to explore all right so once they already explored and they believe that it's good to have an alliance with a certain organization so benefits that now expand for each uh, or for both sides there is interdependence already uh, expansion also so satisfaction with result leads to greater mo motivation and deepening commitment yeah, and so the key feature here is um, each party must seek new areas of activity and maintain consistent effort to create mutual pay and then it leads now to commitment wherein each party invests to build and maintain the relationship so there is loyalty adaptability continuity high mutual dependence okay um, in this relationship that definitely sets the relationship apart okay uh, decline in the solution okay so it comes when one party tends to spark it mounting dissatisfaction leads one side to hold back investment so it takes two to build but only one to undermine so decline often sets uh, sets in without the two parties realization when they believe that the alliance okay does not work already so there is already decline and dissolution parang relasyon lang yan pag hindi na nagwo work then you let go ba? okay now let's take a look at your vertical integration in distribution so when we speak of your vertical integration it means to integrate oh, sorry when you say integration it is to become one 
or to be singular. So vertical integration basically is the process in which several steps in the production and distribution of a product or services are controlled by a single company or entity in order to increase that company's or entity's power in the market. So vertical integration, for example, you are a retailer, but at the same time, you also produce your own product to sell. So like, for example, see, si, uh, good taste. Yeah. Good taste is an example of a retailing business. But at the same time, instead of buying maybe chicken from the producer or from other manufacturer or manufacturer uh, distributors, they grow or they um, have their own uh, poultry farm, okay, and to get their the chicken that they need in order to serve to their customers. So that is an example of vertical integration. So they are the um, retailer, but at the same time, they are also the producer or manufacturer. Okay, yeah. So when a manufacturer integrates a distribution uh, function, making sales, fulfilling orders, okay, the manufacturer's employees do the work and manufacturer has in integrated forward or downstream from the point of production that is forward integration. I'll give an example later. So vertical integration also occurs in downstream direction wherein the distributor or retailer can produce its own branded or source of the product that is your backward integration to understand it better here uh or later later before we go to the example so backward integration the company tries to own an input product company like a car yan owning a company which makes tires we call it backward integration so in my example a while back your um good taste okay they are retailers but at the same time uh producers that is your backward integration and forward integration on the other hand uh, business tries to control the post-production areas namely the distribution network like a mobile company opening its own mobile retail chain so for example samsung yeah so they produce uh, mobile phones but at the same time if they want to distribute their own product and they open uh, samsung mobile retail chain that is an example of forward integration so sila yung manufacturer pero at the same time sila rin yung nagdi-distribute ng product nila we call that forward integ integration so balance integration is a mix between the two yeah, and a balanced strategy to take advantage of both worlds. So again, this is an example. Yeah, and, um, uh, Firestone division of Bridgestone integrated forward. So this is an example of forward integration through ownership of its outlet in the U.S. So Bridgestone, uh, okay, the manufacturer of the star company wanted to distribute their own products so they you know own different outlets okay so you want we call it forward integration okay so in this another example holiday inn so it's a division of intercontinental hotel groups integrated backward so uh, they manufacture their own carpet mills and furniture plants. So we call this backward integration. So Holiday Inn, okay, uh, is an example of a retail chain or a retail store. But instead of buying carpets from another manufacturer or instead of buying their furniture from another manufacturer, they manufacture their own carpets and uh, their own furniture so we call this backward integration okay so this ends our lecture for uh, st400 thank you so much for watching our uh, third lecture